Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Virtue Motors Arena for tonight's B Women's British Basketball League clash between the hometown Sirius Group Newcastle Eagles and the visitors, the B Brown Sheffield Harrahs. A couple of presentations being taking place on court at the moment. Basketball England awards to Abby Orwin, the wife of Eagles assistant head coach uh, Luke Orwin, who has won the media photographer of the year, and for inspiring girls basketball, Chloe Gaynor, who obviously number three for the Newcastle Eagles. This game has been dubbed the big one. Um, it, you see that, as you can see on the screen tonight, two sides of the court available and a very very big crowd healthy crowd in tonight to witness this very very important game in the race for the playoffs now they say you learn something every day right so alongside me to my right not left right this time i have sheffield's very own yorkshireman david elegant now i've known dave many many years and i never knew he was born in sheffield Dave. Yeah. I should be supporting uh, the Hatters tonight then, or the Sharks tomorrow afternoon. Um, obviously, I think our perspective about this clash tonight has probably changed a little bit over the last few weeks. Uh, I think several weeks ago, we would have thought this was a fairly comfortable and easy task for the high-flying Hatters at that point in time with the Eagles and the second half of the table. But the 2024 version of the Newcastle Eagles ladies has been improving uh, all the time since Christmas and uh, I think that the double win over Nottingham really uh, took them to a different level and gave them more confidence and if we had any doubts at all about their improvement and obviously very very good win against the Essex Rebels the last time they hit the court to make it a really interesting game tonight of course the Sharks recently had a win over the Rebels as well the Sharks, uh, they're not particularly massively deepish, but they have got seven players who are averaging over or just around about uh, 20 minutes of games. And they've got five people who can uh, put some points on the board. So really good for clash to look forward to tonight. I'll right, give you the starting fives. We'll start with the visitors. They start with number zero, Carla Drennan. Number seven, Georgia Gale. Number nine, Emma Eichmeyer. Number 21, Desiree Ramos, and number 25, Madison Washington. For the Eagles, it's number 5, Marina Fernandez, number 9, Abby Law, number 10, Lauren Saki, number 15, Tierra Hodges, and number 32, Katie Nolan. As Dave says, really interesting line, uh, match up tonight. Sheffield, three wins in a row coming in. Eagles, two wins in a row coming in. So something has to give. Ball is up, Katie Nolan wins the tip. Tierra Hodges picks it up and it's the Eagles on offense first with Marina Fernandez. Hodges going to drive at the basket, guarded by Drennan at the moment. Back out to Abby Lowe, Abby Lowe goes for the three-pointer and lands the three-pointer. Great start by Abby Lowe. Well, we know Abby Lowe's got the range on that shot and obviously uh, Tierra Hodges fresh from a performance in the all women's all-star game so you know good start from the eagles georgia gale nice pass to washington washington goes inside and lays it up for two clearly the way i think washington sets up in here i expect it to be uh, a threat inside the paints which is interesting but uh, particularly in that game against essex i thought katie nolan had one of the best games uh, she's ever had in an eagles shirt she goes in against Washington and is, uh, well, it's unceremoniously bundled over, but nothing called. Well, she had a good look at the referee, but she got no response. Georgia Gale's three-point shot is well off, but Ramos picks up the rebound, gives it back to Georgia Gale. Out to Drennan in the corner. She misses it. Katie Nola takes the rebound. Fernandez quick outlet to Saki. Saki inside to Hodges. Hodges, well, we thought it was going to be a layup or a foul. It was neither. It should have been a layup because it was an inch perfect pass, but a really good backdoor cut as well by Hodges, who well, also just uh, played some really smart defense there. There's Lauren Saki, leaves it off to Hodges. Hodges mid range jumper is no good. Katie Nolan, though, is there. Misses the first one, doesn't get the second one. Nothing called so far. 
Well, I thought we were going to be talking about another uh, Saki uh, highlight uh, assist there because we've seen the given behind the back passes, but that was behind the back and through the legs. Nice drive through the basket there by Aikmeyer for two, put Sheffield in front for the first time. Low bounces in to Nolan. Nolan inside against Washington is strong and then lays it in for two with a left hand. That's exactly the way she was picking up points against the Essex Rebels as well. She took advantage of the fact that uh, the big from Essex Rebels obviously was wearing a boot that night, not able to play, but really good performance from Katie down in uh, Chelmsford. Georgia Gill being very aggressive early on, but without a great deal of success. Eagles outlet was from Nolan to Fernandez, and now Nolan. Long two is good. Not normally Katie Nolan's what she's renowned for, but she's knocked that one down nicely. Well, she can knock it down from there. I can't see why she can't make that long-awaited debut behind the three-point line. <laughs> yep, she has promised me one before the end of the season. I will hold her to that. That's a battle inside Washington and Nolan, and this is already, we're, we're only three minutes into the game, has become a feature of this game. Washington versus Nolan. That time it's an offensive foul on Washington as Nolan goes tumbling to the ground. Fierce start of the game. Here's Saki. Low guarded by Drennan. Yeah, pretty aggressive defense from Drennan, but just equally aggressive offense. Abby Law determined to get that cross court pass off. And Abby Law attacks the basket and is fouled by Drennan. Good use of the body to protect the ball. Good, he was great. It was the crossover dribble that beat her, and not just that crossover dribble, but the acceleration out of the crossover. First foul of the sorry, second foul of the game, yeah. Avilo averaging 9.6 points a game. The way, the way she's uh, releasing the ball tonight, good form on a shot. One would hope that she could have some games where she can quite uh, get into double figures. Well, she has five points already. Eagles lead nine to four. Ramos at the point for Sheffield. Driving back to Ramos. Here's Washington. And that's going to be a foul, I think, by Tierra Hodges. Is indeed. I don't really want to comment on that without uh, a replay in front of me, but I think all Terry Hodges was doing there is what coaches teach all players to do, and that's fight over the screen. Eagles have come back. Oh, now she's been given as a charging foul. Has to be said that of the three referees, only one even looked at that one, and he was the one that called it. Yeah, and uh, again, we don't have the advantage of the thing, but uh, to me, there was no way at all was Drennan establishing in a, in a position to take that charge. So a couple of tough fouls early on for Tierra Hodges. The league's leading score out, 21.9 points a game, and, and she's sitting on the bench. Yeah, that's what the last thing you want is your leading scorer, Kate, but those numbers going to the bench after only four minutes has been played. Good box out by Abby Lowe against Georgia Gale, but Chloe Gainer couldn't, who's replaced here, or just couldn't quite get the rebound. Yeah, she obviously just come off the bench, call from the bench, just needs to get warmed up. Gale, Ramos for three is no good. Nolan gets a hand, but Fernandez it is, who tidies it up and brings it forward. Chloe Gainer, nice step inside. Eichmeyer, though, was good defence by Emma Eichmeyer. Very, very competitive start, Dave. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, both both teams are setting up uh, sort of like good protective rib around the baskets. There was two uh, hatless players involved in that defensive move. One was making sure Nolan couldn't take any potential pass or rebound. And the other one did a great job of shepherding uh, Gainer across the key. Washington tried to find Eichmeyer inside, and Katie Nolan picked it off. Fernandez it is now. 
There was no such thing as a 1-2 in basketball, but well, that was pretty much close to it. Between Nolan and Fernandez, Chloe Gaynor, she, well, I was thinking she might put the three up. Lauren Saki puts the mid-range two up and makes it on the run. 11-4 Eagles, we've played the first five minutes of the first period. That's yeah, showing a good uh, touch there. She, Saki was against a much taller player, but she sidestepped her, floated away from her. What cool finish. Great finish by Georgia Gale. Got, got into the lane, got into the middle, and floated it up for two. Fernandez again. Eagles have threatened three a few times, but haven't shot it. Nice bounce pass by Gainer into Nolan. Nolan working hard inside and gets it up and over Washington for two points. Here's Ramos, attacks the basket, and that's going to be a foul. No, it's been given as a, an offensive foul. Well, there's certainly one referee who's called quite a bit so far, and it's a timeout, has been called, and we will go to an advert. So we're back, 4.22 to go, Eagles lead 13 to 6, and uh, kind of surprising that the, it was, the timeout was taken by Matt Newby, um, but I don't know if it caught your eye, but Vanessa Ellis is clearly very, very upset with her team, very animated in her timeout, so perhaps uh, Matt Newby may have done Vanessa a, a well, favour by taking that one. I think, uh, I think Coach Newby had a pretty easy uh, timeout there, just more of the same please, uh, ladies, but Vanessa Ellis very animated and pointing repeatedly at the defensive end of the floor and that is where at the moment the hatless problems lie I, I think the hatless are doing a really good job when they rotate out onto a one-on-one -on -one defensive situation they're doing all the right things they're closing down the challenging that player puts the ball on the floor they're trying to contain them and trying to cross but it's off ball inside the key where the Eagles at the moment are doing the damage Second foul was on Desiree Ramos, so Nicolette Farley's come on. Melita Carr is also on. I'm not quite sure who's gone off. I think it may have been uh, Carla Drennan that's gone off as well. Well, I tell you what, this is going to be a long night at the moment. There's just some... Uh, I mean, personally, I haven't agreed with any of the charges, but that's, that's not my job to comment on that. We're just here to talk about how the teams are playing. But that looked like to me like completely incidental contact. Yep. Four fouls called reasonably quickly and all by the same official. Well, there's six, six co calls in total across the two teams. Abilo's three pointer hits the rim and bounces over the backboard. So, Madison Washington takes a break. Naomi Campbell comes on. Farley going in hard. Oh, great save by Zoe Willis, who's just come on. Yeah, pretty careless pass, though, by Abby Law. Yeah. Yeah, Zach Meyer. Oh, great steal now by Zoe Willis. That's two really good bits of defence by Zoe. But unfortunately, the Eagles fumble the ball. And this time... It's a foul by Zoe Willis as she goes to try and block the ball. Foul is on Nicolette Fairley, so she'll go up the line to shoot two. There's a lot of action going on at the moment, Jeff. A lot of energy going into the game. I think you just need a little bit better execution. Nice to see almost all of the Eagles men in the house to our right on the balcony. And those people who've been following the Eagles for a lot of years will know this young lady on the line who's the next Eagle when they were playing at Northumbria. Yeah, and Nicolette. Fairly, she's now known. 
Sheffield quickly got the five, 13 8. Eagles back on offense. Saki looking for the pass. Offensive foul call, I think, on Zoe Willis. That's five, I make it five offensive fouls. Well, in a, in a game that's been played in a good spirit, in a game that's playing a lot of ball movement, we've already had seven fouls across the two across the two teams. And if you say five of them have been charged, that's highly unusual. Great rebound by Emma Aikmeyer and put back. And the gap's now down to three. Yeah, I think Aikmeyer in a moment and uh, Dremer uh, doing uh, the work for the chart for the Hatters, sorry. Campbell fouls Fernandez as she attacks the basket. And Zoe Willis has to come out because she's picked up her second foul. Rachel Bland comes in. These, these are important free throws because everything was going the Eagles' way at the start, and then the the Sheffield Hatters have uh, slowly but surely just settled down and got into a pattern and crept into this game. So she can sink these two, that restores a five-point lead. And Marina Fernandez is yeah. two from two, and it is 15 to 10 with 2:50 to go in the first period. Fairly to Campbell. Campbell looking for Emmanuel Carr, but it's gone back to Fairly. She finds Emmanuel Carr for the three, is an air ball over the top. Chloe Gainer picks it up, gives it to Fernandez, and the Eagles on offense again. Saki penetrates into the middle. Oh, that was a really good effort, but it just come off the yeah. backboard and just went the wrong side. Great footwork and very high elevation, which was the right thing to do off the grass against the taller player, just didn't drop for her. Clearly Hatters feel like the Mario Carr is a three-point threat. She's gone, took the last two shots. That's a great block at the other end by Emma Aikmeyer. On as Fernandez attacked the basket. Sarah Burkett coming into the game for Lauren Saki. Georgia Gale back in for Aikmeyer. Yep. inbound 10 seconds on the shot clock Marina Fernandez goes all the way but can't make the layup goes Georgia Gill uh, didn't she captain the north side in this all-star game yeah and she showed the potential from behind the art didn't she in the all-star game and just shown it there uh, yeah tonight. everybody in the whole league knows you just don't let her heat up at all from behind the arc And is possibly guilty a little bit of over dribbling, but Eagles find it tough to pen penetrate the Sheffield defence. Chloe Gainer's shot is off the front of the rim, but Rachel Bland was alive to it and picked up the rebound. Eagles get another 14 seconds. And is inside to Chloe Gainer, and that's going to be a foul. Good Foul call by the official. Foul is on Nicolette Fairley. Yeah. Katie Nolan comes back in for Rachel Bland. Illegally stepped into the path of the cutting Chloe Gaynor. The Hatters in the penalty. Well, the Eagles can't afford to give any more either, otherwise the Hatters will be at the free throw line. Chloe Gaynor misses the first. And misses the second, but Katie Nolan is there again, doing what Katie Nolan does, offensive rebound and put back. Yeah. Inside having, the last minute. Having seen that, Coach Ellis immediately wants uh, Washington back in there. Well, oh, that's a great steal. 
Yeah, how great quick steal by Shauna Harrison. And yeah, and great, really quick thinking by Nicolette Thurley. It's a two point game. And that's going to be a foul. Katie Nolan burrowing and working hard as always on the offensive end. And the foul is on Naomi Campbell. Yeah, I mean. Katie outmaneuvered Naomi there right at the start of that offense by simply pinning her down back to the basket. There was just no way you can get uh, in a, a better position than that offensively and very difficult defensive position for Naomi to defend. You would have wanted Naomi to be at least half away around Katie when the ball was out beyond the three-point line. Katie Nolan misses the first. So gets the bounce from the second one. Yeah. 30 seconds to go. Eagles up 18 to 15. It's very, very physical inside there. Yeah, and I was just going to say very physical indeed. And Melita Emmanuel Carr has, in trying to go acro across the key, is just bur buried Abby Low. 19.3 left on the clock. Marina Fernandez almost lost ah, it. it good recovery by her though. It was an excellent recovery. And she got the ball away to Katie Nolan. And she's now going to shoot the three. That's off the rim. Two seconds left. Carr has to give it almost a halfway line heave. And it misses. And that was as entertaining and tough a game of women's basketball you'll see for the first 10 minutes well you're saying the very very physical play from each each side but i think the referees have got to be a little bit more tolerant of that because you want your defensive players to play tough and hard nosed day that's what it's all about i mean the eagles made by the far the better start and although the hatters have improved and crept their way back into the game i think uh, i think it's fair to say that the eagles just shaded that quarter so 18 15 We'll have our break between quarters. Team's just about to come out. Second quarter. Hodges returns with Bland, Saki, Nolan, and Low. The Sheffield will respond with Fairly, Gale, Drennan, Emmanuel Carr, and Washington. Well, I think one of the key moments in that quarter was when Thierry Hodges picked up a second foul I think that gave the Hatters the opportunity to work their way back into the game so the last thing the Eagles need is and particularly try and avoid this uh, p offensive charges she's been picking up is Chieri to play smart and get the halfway halfway mark with just two fouls Georgia Gill missed the shot but Nicolette F Fairley was there to pick it up and drop it in yeah I thought the Eagles Double team did a good job in uh, making it tough for that Hatters player to score, but the rest of the defense can't go to sleep when you have a double team because there's got to be rotations, and that left the Hatters player absolutely wide open. As Tierra Hodges makes a mark, well, that was a tough, tough shot to make. 
nice, nice fake pass there by Georgia Gale. Washington on the turn. That's going to be a foul by Katie Nolan. Doesn't really feel she did anything, but... Yeah, again, Jeff, I think both teams need to just work a little bit on improving their post-up defence because every time the ball moves and you've got a post-up situation like you're getting from Washington at one end and Nolan at the other, the defence needs to adapt to the moving position of the ball. Martin, you'll be in discussion with the referee because I think he spotted what a lot of people spotted, that there seems to be... Of all these followers call, one referee has absolutely dominated the calls. Washington's first one rims out. Well, you can hardly expect Marion Dodds to go over to another referee during the game and say, stop making so many calls. It's just, just something coaches have to live with. Yes, it's a coach's job and the, with the right manner to get on to the officials about the way they're calling. That's the first time I've seen that in a long, long time. A free throw disallowed for putting a foot over the line. Well, I think, first of all, there was confusion about Abby Law receiving that ball because she ran from the front court to the back. I'm not absolutely certain about that rule, but what I am certain about is great defence from the Hatters for pushing her and making her go out of bounds. But it was called an illegal hush. Yeah. Personally, I thought it was great defense. Boy. Did you pick this up, Jeff? Thinking about what Coach Ellis might have said to the Hatters? Nolan's the big threat here. There was one point there, two, two points. When they had three players around her. And then what Katie Nolan had to do was try and find some space and some room, and uh, yeah, she was judged to have done it unfairly and called for a foul. Her second foul as well. And you think back to the Essex game, I uh, think Nolan was a constant threat to the Rebels' defence in that game, particularly in and around the basket. And this time it's a ball handling error by Drennan. So just a little bit untidy at the moment, the game. The Eagles leading by three and on offense with Saki. Hodges, she'll attack the basket. Great oh. block though by Washington. But Abby Lowe does well to pick it up, back up. Katie Nolan battles away with Washington and it's Washington that knocks it down over the dead ball line. Well, I think there's, there's, there's two matchups intriguing me here, but she, although Nicolette's not on at the moment, I don't think. She's just, no, gone she's off, just yeah. going off, yeah. That, Matchup with Sack is a good one, but this one between Nolan and uh, Washington's really good matchup. Hodges is short with a two point effort. Gale picks up the rebound and brings it forward. Trent in the corner, she plays Washington on the turnaround, but it's no good. And Sack it is who picks up the rebound and she's gone at pace. Katie Nolan once again inside. comes out, Marina Fernandez goes back in. Martin, you'll be clearly upset with the officiating at the moment. Fernandez got away from there. Carr, Emmanuel Carr knocks down the three, gives the Eagles a six point lead. First five points of the, sec of the second period, Georgia Gill shot is off. Well, it has to be said, I'm going to have to use the word, but it, it's true enough, it is absolute carnage inside. <laughs> There's another one, Rachel Bland goes on the, the back. Ramos misses her three-point shot. Nolan takes a rebound. Great pass by Marina Fernandez. Great outlet running by Tierra Hodges. And two more points to the Eagles. Well, you stress to your players 
the score or the shooter is only as good as the passer. That was a brilliant pass. And also very, very well taken. And finished. Says Drennan, she tries to find Carr inside. Doesn't make it, but Washington's there with the offensive rebound and put back. Behind the back, over the top, into Hodges. Hodges takes two bounces and lays it in for two. Gale coming aggressively back for Sheffield. Almost loses the handle. Well, you've got to keep the pressure on Georgia Gale. You take it off, she's going to fire the three. Hope Dren is all right. I mean, she She's made it crashing through yeah. the, the doors behind. Yeah, and then ended up going into the exit doors. Well, there's no no shortness of toughness in this game, Jeff. No, certainly not. Dren drove to the basket, and there was a late call on the foul, and then she went crashing through the exit doors. Her body was one side, her head was the other. And a lot of support from her Sheffield teammates, but also a very good sportsmanship from the AD who asked to just check with her that she was okay when she returned and taken up a position on the free throw line. So Nolan to the bench, so to toughen up on the boards and handle this Washington threat, we've got uh, Rodriguez. And this is the first. Well, amid all this excitement, I must confess to not realising the Eagles have stretched out to an eight-point lead. We'll make that seven now. Yep. 27-20. So clearly this first half of the second quarter belongs to the Eagles. Sati picked up by Ramos, but works it at Hodges, and Hodges and Fernandez exchange passes. Hodges looking in the mood tonight, and wow, what a play, what a play from... Kiera Hodges and it makes it a nine point gap. Yeah, great individual skill, showing really good ball control, but the thing that impressed me the most was her awareness of where the basket was. Three point shot is gone. What a great, seen some great passes in transition here today from both teams, there's another one. And a lovely bit of return wow. play by Sheffield. Great, that great basketball at both ends. That pass was so accurate from the Hatters that it created a two-on-one situation with an easy finish up on transition. I have to say that as, as good as the passes are, and you're right, Dave, have been, Tierra Hodges' is rim to rim running has been excellent. Fernandez this time, oh, that's oh, almost a great pass to yeah, Saki. I think Drennan got a hand yeah, on that. Yeah, she did, yeah. she did, yeah. And a timeout is called by... Sheffield, I believe, and we will go to an advert. A car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares, and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail. So, about halfway through the second period, the Eagles lead 31 to 22. I'd just like to take a moment to go away from the, uh, the court and go to the stands. Because you mentioned beforehand, especially some the Eagles do every year, try and link it as near as possible to the International Day for Women. But this crowd has grown since since you last tell me. I'm looking around. This crowd has definitely grown after the tip-off. Yeah, it's a really, really healthy crowd. Be interesting to get the figure. I'm sure we will get it in the second half. Um, estimating probably about six to seven hundred, I would have said, possibly a few more. Yeah, and they're seeing a very competitive game at the moment. And very good game, is Yeah, the Eagles have just proven that little bit better at finishing uh, the final part of it by scoring better at one end of the floor and doing a really good defensive job at the other. 
but this this game is uh, far from over this Hatters team has got the character needed to, to come back into this game so the Eagles must keep their concentration keep mm, pushing that transition game I think that's causing the shot the uh, Hatters some problems Matt Newby's talked a lot about 40 minute basketball and feels his side getting closer and closer put in a great performance down in Essex where they probably did play for a good 40 minutes the shot had to go up there by Lauren Saki time is expiring missed it Sheffield back on offence Wabi Lowe just not quite fully aware there eight by a great drive to the basket missed the shot but the foul is going to be on Abby Lowe which was much to the relief of Marina Fernandez, who looked on as if she could not believe the foul had been called on her, which is right, it wasn't. Well, I think I think the highlight of that play was uh, how Ike Meyer spotted the chance to, to split a gap, split the defence, that crossover dribble into those two steps was uh, really well executed. Eichmeier at the line for two. First one is good. Just while we're taking these free throws, you made the point uh, about Coach Newby stressing, you know, the game's over 40 minutes. I think somebody needed last night to stress that to the Surrey, visiting Surrey Scorchers. Five minutes to go, they were still in the game, yet the Eagles won by 41 points. Yeah, massive, massive final quarter, 41-15 the final quarter. And there's another foul on Washington, and that is, oh, I thought it was a third, it's only a second. Katie Nolan, though, drawing that foul, will go up the line to shoot two. I mean, I've known, known throughout history, some coaches will go nuts there with Washington for not, not taking the better position. But there's two aspects to this of where Nolan's playing at the moment. Yes, Washington's got to do a job. She really should be trying to get around Katie Nolan to try and take the mask. But the other part of it, Jeff, is pressure on the ball. Great, great point, Dave, and very yeah. true as well. Nolan makes the first. And this is a second that would have put the Eagles up by 10 points had that gone in. Nine points it, it remains. Now, if you take your eye off the scoreboard, this feels like a, an, an equal game, but the Eagles are holding on to this nine-point lead. It's reasons like that. It's good, tough defense and excellent rebounding. It was good off good offense from Washington, but uh, Nolan stuck with the task and kept the pressure on her. Well, we've seen some real battles today, and uh, hats off to Abby North for sticking with the task there. She took what two offensive rebounds yeah. to get the chance to go up the line and drew the foul on Madison Washington, who immediately walked straight to the bench. She on three. She on three. She'll probably stay there for the rest of the half, I would have thought. Oh, there's no chance she'll... Uh, Lowe makes it first. Yeah, just can't afford to pick up a No, there'd be some unbelievable circumstances uh, if Vanessa Ellis was to bring her back in this uh, this quarter. Abby Lowe continues to shoot the ball well. And the Eagles now not only lead by double digits, they lead by 11 points, 34 to 23. Boy, we've certainly got some, uh, I think both coaches are going to go into the dressing room at half time and hope the referees are going to tire in the second half. <laughs> We're getting a lot of fouls on that scoreboard, particularly on the at the side of it. Tierra Hodges took that rebound there and was triple teamed as she did so. The result is, Saki finds Fernandez. Fernandez hits the triple. You leave Fernandez that wide open and she's feeling the, the groove. She's going to make that shot. And here's another one. Another great defensive stand, but Fernandez overcooks our layup. Boy, how quick was Ramos to take that rebound and get out in transition. And she deserves to finish that. Yeah, good play by yeah. Desiree Ramos. Absolutely great play. It's pulled it just back, that two points pulls it back to 12. As Dave said, it, watching the game, it's a it's really, really tough game. And you would never think that one side was opened by double digits. Oh, what a great, great bit of play by Katie Nolan to box out there. But Saki couldn't find low with the pass. Georgia Gale comes away with it. 
Ramos driving in hard. It's no good. Nolan takes the rebound. Gives it to Fernandez who loses the ball. Substitution. Ramos comes out. Fairly goes in. Yeah, I mean, good, good, good session for Ramos. the Eagles who called the timeout in a second. Vanessa Ellis still got one up her sleeve. Right, Coach Ellis might not have been expecting this, but we've seen, haven't we? We've seen a gradual improvement as they've gone into this 2024 year. Um, started, I think, probably with that win at uh, Nottingham Wildcats, 20-point win or whatever it was, gave them a lot of confidence. Because Wildcats, remember, were the ones who knocked them out the trophy early in, uh, That's right, yeah. in January. But uh, really impressed with Nolan's performance against the Essex Rebels. Well, he finds... Campbell, I believe, inside. Yeah, yeah it was. Great, great team play that. Three players involved. And the one we won't mention was the one who made the, bl the blind cut that took everybody's eyes off Naomi Campbell. Turn around, jump shot from Tierra Hodges. No good. Yeah, and good boxing out by Campbell at this end. So she's had a good minute or so. Both ends of the floor. All she needed to do was finish it off and get an assist. I admire to Fairley. And from the corner, three point shot is great. And suddenly it's down to seven. Interesting, it's, it's a swing since the Eagles took the time out. Foul call on Naomi Campbell. Sheffield not in the penalty yet, but yeah. they will be after that foul. Well, that last three for the Hatters was knocked down by Shauna Harrison. And yeah. uh, she, she's run that left-hand lane quite a bit this game and got herself into that corner. It's just that teammates just haven't found her, but it's, it's a good place for an offensive player to be. And if she's got the ability to knock that down, they need to look a little bit more to that type of move. Battling inside. You just sense 127 on the clock. You just sense that the Hatters will be more than satisfied if they can get this gap down to five or under. I'm not sure if it's Coach Newby or the bench, but uh, Eagles have just been warned about any further talking could get them a technical, so immediately Matt Newby does do some more talking. Obviously a bit more respectfully perhaps. Yeah, I was going to say, if he handles it in the right way, I don't see how other referee could be putting the technicals on anybody. That was a tough pass by Abby Lowe, but uh, Lauren Sackey did really well to get in front of Georgia Gale, who fouled her. Yeah, and just when then the Hatters were thinking about that target of perhaps getting it under five by the end of this quarter. Georgia Gill goes and puts them in. Well, they were already in the p in that four foul situation, so this was a clear always going to be two shots from the line. The moment, a little bit of a let off, doesn't make the first. The Eagles have been guilty of missing a few free throws in this first half. Saki on the line for the second one. Makes the second one with a favourable bounce. Has 
they have to see, look, the, the foul count on the Hatters is very severe at the moment. But there's another three yeah. from uh, Shona Shona Harrison, Harrison yeah. again. She's taking that position. She's not getting spotted. The ball was on the left-hand side of the floor. Somebody should have been in the passing lane. And it is down to five points. Tara Hodges though makes it seven again. Well, you just simply can't leave her alone, can you, full stop? She's on Aikman. Aikmaier at this end. And there's Harrison again for a third one, but this one doesn't go. Marina Fernandez passes a little bit too quick. This is where you go. You don't get your heads down. You get together. You huddle. That's what they're doing. That's it. Go and uh, say to each other, don't worry. Next. What's next? Quite a small substitution, I think, this one, Yeah, Dave. so she doesn't get three, four, yeah. four, half, yeah. And you said right at the beginning, if she can get to the half of just two, that would be a really good job yeah. done. And particularly as she's come on and scored heavily, Tierra Hodges, as well. So the Eagles up by seven. Aikmaia comes inside. That's too strong, but she gets her own rebound, but she can't put it back up. She gets another rebound, missed that one as well. And Abby Lowe is a foul as she tries to go through a gap which wasn't really there. Fourteen fouls on Sheffield in the first half. Line. First miss tonight. Makes the second though. Eight point gap, 20 seconds to go. Will Sheffield just settle for the one shot? Depends on what they're giving, I suppose. I think Maya bumps in. Basket is good. Well, I, th I thought Fires the Eagles had done all the right things there by forcing her to the left. She's going away from the basket. But what happens? You bump her and she gets an hand one. Hodges coming back in for Rodriguez. That'll be because the Eagles will be on offense for the last 12 seconds of the half. And the gap is six points. And Reichmeyer makes this, it will be down to five again. She doesn't, and big battle for the boards. Nicolette fairly gets it, and that is fouled. And, I have and it's a third foul on Tierra Hodges. And can you believe it? I was just about to say, I hope this doesn't backfire on him. And it has. And 7.5 seconds to go, absolutely don't leave her out there. Oh, wait a minute, what's going on? Well, I think it's just been a bit pedantic there. Well, you weren't you weren't in the right spot, so I'm not going to let you on. Well, she is now. Why can't he do, execute the uh, change? Tierra Hodges has just not got... If this misses, she really doesn't need to contest the rebound, but Fairley's knocked them both down. In fairness, she should not have contested it previously. She knows she's on two fouls. She knows she's been put in there for a reason, and you're going to get to the half with only two fouls. So it's 7.5 seconds left to go. 41-37, the Eagles lead. They were up by 14 at one point, so it's a great comeback by Sheffield. It's only two seconds, and it's been stolen by Nicola Fairley, but her half-court heave is no good. So the Eagles get to the half, four points in front. I just want to say that's one of the most physical games of women's basketball I've seen for a long, long time in the first 20 minutes. But the Eagles have managed to take a four-point lead after being up by 14. And, you know, Matt Newby's been complaining about the calls, and yet when you look at the foul count, it's very much in the Eagles' favour. Um, but we've got a great 20 minutes of basketball in store, Dave. But you know, despite all the comings and goings, the Eagles have just shaded it. But the warning is that the Hatters are working to the way back into the game. This physical thing, love it. This is the way all games should be played. 
Uh, it's only in this country where referees seem to want to blow everything to see on the continent, in America, everywhere else, to let the game go like this. Uh, this is the way it should be played. Uh, and uh, the Hatters will feel comfortable. They've got into that under five, as I suggested. And I think uh, she'll be laying into him into the dressing room about what happened at the start to make sure there's no complacency at the start of the second half. It was a mistake to put Thierry Hodges back in the game, but that's the way it goes. They live with it now. She will be out there starting the second half. We'll get some stats together for you and we'll buy back in about 10 minutes or so. And But as I say, at the half, it's the Serious Group Newcastle Eagles 41, the V Braun Sheffield Hatters 37.
Welcome back to the Virtue Motors Arena for the second half of tonight's Women's British Basketball League clash between the hometown Serios Group Newcastle Eagles and the visitors to be Braun Sheffield Hatters. Eagles leading by 41 to 37 at the half. And when you look at the scoring and the, the points, Eagles um, shooting overall 43%, 42% uh, from two point range and 50% from. Uh, three-point range, but they've only shot six three-pointers, which is unusual for them. Sheffield 38 overall. They are 57% from inside, but only 17% from three-point range. They've also missed five free throws, and the Eagles have missed six free throws. Rebounding is 23 overall to 20 in favour of the Eagles. The Eagles have 12 assists and 10 turnovers. The Hatters have six assists and nine turnovers. Uh, both teams have five steals. Individually, uh, it's Eagles are the only team with anybody in double figures. Tierra Hodges has 12 points and three rebounds. Katie Nolan, 10 points and five rebounds. And both Marina Fernandez and Abby Lowe both have eight points. Lauren Saki has six assists. For Sheffield, their leading scorer is Nicolette Fairly with eight points. Um, Emma Eitmeyer has seven. And Shauna Harrison, those two threes, has six. And the other one is Madison Washington has got six points as well. Uh, Emma Eitmeyer has also got six rebounds to go with those seven points. And on the assist front, as I say, they've only got six of, and three of those have got, gone to Nicolette Fairley. Well, you know, a lot of stats to take in there. I mean, the, the main stat, I think, is the number of fouls the Hatters have picked up. And it's okay. interesting that in terms of where this game can go in the second half, there's one name on the Hatters side that you didn't mention who could be a big factor in this game, and that's Georgia Gale. Yeah, two of five at the moment. Yeah. One, of two from, one of three from three-point range. She's only got five points, but we know that she'll want to get improve on that. And we're off and running for the second half. We'll keep you up to date with how things are going. Georgia Gale into Washington. Washington buries inside. Katie Nolan thought she was doing a good enough job of defensively, but once again, our referee who seems to like his whistle. Well, that was an easy call, to be honest, Jeff. I yeah. mean, because... Um, thought Washington just did that little head fake, moved Katie's position slightly, but there was no doubt at all that Katie pushed in and made the contact on. That was an easy call. And Madison Washington was averaging 14.4 points a game and also 8.4 rebounds, so she's well below what, what you would expect from her, but of course, three fouls in a half means you tend to sit on the bench for quite a bit. Interesting to see that the Eagles obviously didn't start Tierra Hodges in this in this, this second half. Chloe Guiana coming on instead to start. Fernandez for three is just short. Abby Lowe realised that from way out and went after that rebound aggressively and got it. Saki with a little hop, skip and a jump and in it goes. That, that's, I, mean, I mean, I don't know whether that's a runner or a floater or whatever, but she's quite good at it. She... She seemed, uh, makes the impression that she's driving on the defensive player and then just steps off that one foot and she's very controlled when she makes it. I think if Chloe let that go, that would have been yeah, an I Eagles was ball. I was yeah. That, yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah, very it difficult, man. Emma Aikmaier, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Emma looks as if she's taking a, a big blow in the face there. Georgia Gale's got the ball at the end line. It gives it a Ramos. And that's a foul by Saki. Good footwork by Ramos to go past that and led to Lauren Saki having to foul. Well, I think, is that th Saki's third foul? No, it's not. No, first. no it's just a first, yeah. The three that was flashing was for Tierra Hodges. Yeah. Ramos wide open, knocks down the two. Now, you know, we talked about the matchup between Saki and Nicolette Fairley, but this one's just equally as interesting because when Fairley's on the bench, then you've got uh, Ramos running the point. He was looking to hit back. It's 
Sheffield have taken one point off them. Abby Lowe's three point is no good. Madison got a Washington got a great offensive when uh, sorry defensive rebound position. Georgia Gill felt she was oh, bumped all yeah, the way. She was, she was bumped. That's that made that a very tough shot to deliver, but totally focused on where the hoop was. And Fernandez turns it over. Ramos comes away with it. Gives it to Drennan, but Drennan can't make it. And Chloe Gaynor takes the rebound. I think Drennan there was more concerned about was there going to be contact rather than finishing the move. But Sharks certainly stepped up. They're closing down and how aggressive they are when they close down. Madison he's Washington's winning the battle. He's just having the, the battle moment. royal, aren't they? Yeah, but she's winning it at the moment. And Sheffield with a chance to take the lead. Great fake by Washington. Gets all the way to the basket and plays in. Sheffield do take the lead. 44 to 43. The fake was good, but I'll tell you what, the finish was even better. The way she slowed down on that second step. And then Nolan had to do everything possible to avoid the contact. That's a great pass. And Chloe Ginner puts it in. Really, really good awareness from Marina Fernandez. And what, while, while you praise one team, you say to the other, what on earth was the Hatters defence looking at there? Nobody had a clue that Chloe Ginner was in that position. Having said all that, Jeff, the Hatters are within one. Yeah, well, they were in the front until that moment. That short. Lauren Sackley's in the right place to take the long rebound. She was thinking about attacking the basket, but he decided not to. Now trying to work the position. Abby Low for three is no good. Missed everything. Yeah, not the best shot or decision. Well, in a sense, it was a good one to take because she's capable of knocking them down and absolutely no defense on her at all. And, uh, well, well, there's Drennan drains a three. She didn't call glass, but who cares? Because they got the three points and lead for the first time. No, they just led before. Oh, that's right, my yeah. fault. But uh, Lauren Saki levels it with a lovely two. As you say, it's a, it's a, is it a running floater or is it? I don't know. I but don't it, know, it, but it goes in. <laughs> what I'm impressed with is there's no, no slacking off of Fernandes. intensity. And, uh, well, that's a really good small play between Fernandez and uh, Saki. And just like that, Eagles are back in front. This could be close the rest of the way. And I haven't said that, it probably means one side will blow the other one out. Georgia Gale wants to game driving hard to the basket and it's fouled. Well, the stats tell us she had a quiet first half but she's certainly made a good start in the first four and a half minutes of the second half. Chloe Dean has done a good job for the Eagles there. Four well, and a half minutes. I think Coach Newby has thought that if we can stay competitive, I just want to have a neither in the second half, but I don't want to get in four fouls early. And he's avoided that. Just now's knees there to be smart and not go for unnecessary contact. Georgia Gunix one of two. 49-48, 5.27 to go. Fernandez, Hodges now back on court. Saki twists one way and the other, gives it to Nolan. Nolan trying to find room for a shot, gets a shot off, but misses it. Under thought, lots of pressure. Yeah, I thought Washington kept the pressure on her very well. Georgia Gill was wide open there and she missed really a chippy. And then Dred Drennan stepped back for the three and missed everything completely. We thought that was going to be the three point effort. Good drive to the basket by Marina Fernandez, but she can't make it. Sheffield tidy it up. Eichmann all the way down, complaining to the referee. That's going to be a foul by Lauren Saki, I think. 
I think we might have a timeout coming. We have got a timeout by Newcastle and we will go to an advert. single point 49 48 Matt Newby calls the time out I don't think he'd be concerned at the moment but he just wants to make sure that he say stay focused and keep going well I mean normally in a, in a game this tight one point you can't get much tighter than that the only way it can be pointed if it was tied somewhere playing a fairly even first half of this third quarter he must be concerned about something further down the line because otherwise he would not have taken a timeout in a tight situation like this. It want both coaches, if they're thinking ahead, of want to keep both those timeouts unless, of course, one team suddenly starts running away with it. I mean, a perfect example of that this afternoon. Close finish over at Newcastle University and both coaches had three three timeouts left in the last uh, couple of minutes of the game and used them all to see the game home. Ramos on the line makes the first. And the second, Dan Sheffield now go by a point. Nicholas Fairley comes on to replace the successful free throw shooter. Yeah, in, in the that switch there, I mean, you almost have the same, no matter who, which one of them's on. Rama's probably a little bit better at putting the ball in the basket, but otherwise, both like to drive the teams. Lauren Saki fired up there. She went almost coast to coast, but was foul as she put the shot up. Not quite sure what's happening there, but Sheffield players were all around. Marianne Dodds. Uh, whatever it is, none of the none of the two players on three fouls picked up anything there. So that was a first foul on Shauna Harrison. Well, Saki makes the first. Well, level again is 50 points each. Two or two, Eagles up by a point. Fairly brings it forward for Sheffield. Gives it to Harrison. At the Gale and Harrison will shoot the three and makes the three. That's three or four she is now. Nine points personal. I mean, for most of that first half, we didn't mention did we? Other than I kept seeing a sneak to that corner and eventually it paid off for her because now. Oh, it's what a shoot. pass that is. Three for four? Yep. What a pass that was from Lauren Saki. And Hodges didn't make it, but was foul as she tried to make it. And now, who is that foul being called on? That's going to be the interesting one. Well, the second foul on Georgia Gale. And Madison Washington takes a seat. Tierra Hodges takes a seat. Step to the free throw line. Makes the first. I mean, Madis Madison's on three fouls already, and uh, perhaps Vanessa Coach Ellis start thinking the way she's been throwing herself around defensively, she might pick up a fourth. So just calm her down a little bit, give her a few minutes on the bench. And we have reached that point you have mentioned before, where it's the only thing closer than a one-point game is a tied game, 53-53. Emma Aikman was, Aikmeyer was completely unmarked in the, in the centre of the of Georgia Gill, just missed her, but instead thinks, oh, well, just Maral just shoot a three instead yeah. and makes a three. Well, we've had some good battles today. There's another one developing between Abby Lowe and Naomi Campbell. Oh, it's a great pass. Tara Hodges 
doesn't make ah, the two. Thought, thought she was going to get the friendly roll. Chloe Yin has cleaned out by Shauna Harrison. Nicola Fairley finds, well, that's great defense by Chloe Yin. Nicola Fairley found Naomi Campbell under the basket, and Chloe Yin came from behind. And then when the shot didn't go, she was there for the rebound. Here's Saki, who oh, is a great pass. Uh, Lauren Saki is dishing out the assists like nobody's business. She had wow. six at the half. She must have at least another two or three now. That's probably the best execution of a pick and roll I've seen in this game so far. The screen was set correctly, the right angle, the roll was perfect, and the pass was absolutely inch perfect. Abby Lowe picks up her third foul, so she goes to the bench. Georgia Gale with two shots, misses yeah. the first. Probably a good move. A, protect Abby from getting a fourth this quarter, but secondly, Zoe Willis is, you know, capable of making a good contribution to the game. And she hasn't been in since the first half, so she'll have a little bit of desire, a bit of hunger. Of course, you realise the Georgia Gill situation, her aunt's coaching her. Yeah. Come on, niece, get to the bench. <laughs> Tiara Hodges return, the old jump shot is good. Levels it up at 57 all again. This is a humdinger. We thought it might be. Sheffield probably thought it might be a bit easier. Yeah. He goes at the moment. Hanging tough. Kalita. Emmanuel Carr. Nicola Fairley. Naomi Campbell. Well, that's a nice move by Campbell. Comes inside, yeah. lays it up for two. Don't want the player get into the middle of the defence that easily. You know, all coaches say no middle. Oh, Lauren Saki with a bit of magic. And a timeout call by Vanessa Ellis, and we will go to a advert. Well, there seems to be an issue with the officiating, but never mind. Let's move on with the game. A car designer cares about even the tiniest detail. Which surely should be matched by the way a retailer selects, prepares and checks every single car. That's what makes a Virtue Motors used car so much more than an ordinary one. Experience this on the phone, online, or with a video appointment. Because at Virtue Motors, it's all in the detail. You mentioned about Georgia Gale only having five points at the half. She's got seven in this quarter and is up to 12 yeah. points and leads the Hatters now in scoring. She's been a, she's been a, a factor, I think. Both coaches have uh, called a timeout in a very, very tight game, and obviously both coaches will have had the reason. That I, you can never be absolutely sure, but I think Coach Ellis will be chuffed to bits, so Coach Newby won't be of how easily Naomi Campbell stepped to the middle there for that sort of one-two little hook shot. But uh, I think Coach Ellis will be really, really upset that there was no help defence at all there to protect against the player guarding Saki, who just beat everybody with that crossover dribble. Lawrence, Lawrence Saki up to 11 points personal and eight assists. Georgia Gale, the only uh, Hall of player in double figures. Ike, Ike Meyer. Newby looks he's got a burst of blood vessel at the minute. But I would be fair to say that neither coach is particularly happy with the officiating, so the players will just have to sort it out themselves. Harrison turns the corner, and there's me circus wow. shot, and she's made it, and she now goes into double figures as well. Circus, I would say, that was degree of difficulty 10. <laughs> Possibly even more, 10 out of 5. I tell you what, though, what was brilliant about it was she had to do that amazing 1-2 step. She never lost her focus on where the rim was. 
Chloe Guinness three is short. And he's about to go into the last minute. Sheffield just with that two point lead. Which means they're winning this quarter by six, but what a steal there by Lauren yeah, Saki. Great, great defense from Saki. And she's going and all the way around. Oh, and Zoe Willis has missed it. Tierra Hodges, well. Lauren Saki's just gone up and congratulated Tierra Hodges, but I think uh, Zoe Hodges, uh, Zoe Willis went and apologized to, to Lauren Saki. Well, the so it's a the fourth foul on Naomi Campbell, so she will be coming out, I would imagine. No, it's Emma Ike, Maya who comes out. I think, I think she'll leave uh, Naomi Campbell in there. Naomi's been uh, doing a good job getting these minutes. Yes, she's picking up the fouls, but I think uh, Coach Ellis will be thinking about resting Eichmann's more important at this stage. Hodges makes the first. Sorry, Ike Meyer, is that right? Ike, Ike Meyer, yeah. yeah. Hodges makes both. 61-61. Inside the last 40 seconds of the half. Sorry, of the quarter. Manuel, Manuel Carr goes hard, but can't make it. Hodges finds Gainer. Gainer in for two. And it's the Eagles that lead by two. Game clock and shot clock almost in sync. Harrison turns the corner, bumps away to the basket, doesn't make it. Chloe Gainer takes the rebound. We've got eight seconds, the Eagles. Well, why not just give it to Hodges? But that's a great block by Manuel Carr. Jump ball called, but I think, well, I was going to say, I think the time's expired, but the jump ball, I think, was called before. But well, I'll be amazed if the referees don't call the end of the quarter. Well, good officiating here because they've realised that, and one of the, the lead official has yep, gone. One yeah, second, yeah, one second left. Yeah, a little bit of contrast at the end there to finish this quarter, and that is how hard Sheffield had to work to try and get that bucket at this end here, which they didn't make, and then that quick pass, outlet pass from the Eagles made it really easy for Chloe Gaynor to just drive in and finish it with an easy layup. Well, I would say that was a foul, but I would agree with the officials, unless they're going to communicate, but the, there was just simply not enough time on the clock for that to be uh, called in. The, the, clearly, the quarter had finished. So it has finished, and Sheffield just win that quarter by two. It's now 63 to 61. So what Matt Newby's got at the moment is a 30-minute game from his team. Can he get those vital last 10 minutes? That's what He's got three players on three fouls, but for him, the probably the really good news will be that his uh, Gia Hodges is not on four. Just have a quick look at some of the individual scores as we go into the last ten minutes. The duck competition goes on. Yeah, a bit of, bit of most we've probably had at the ladies game ever. So for, for the Sheffield Hatters, top scorer Georgia Gale with 12, Shauna Harrison with 11, Nicholas Fairley with 8 and Madison Washington with 9. Washington's also got 6 rebounds. Emma Eichmeyer has 7 points and 7 rebounds. Pretty much, and we also have Desiree Ramos on six points. For the Eagles, it's all about the starting five. We have Tierra Hodges on 18 points and seven rebounds. Lauren Saki on 11 points and eight assists. Katie Nolan and Marina fernandez Pardo both on 10 points apiece. And Abby Lowe on eight from the bench. Chloe Gainer has six points. 
Well, I think both coaches were, were canny in different ways in that quarter. Coach Newby decided to not to start the quarter with Jerry Hodges. He's protected her. She's only got the three fouls. She's got 18 points. And Coach Ellis did it the other way around. She rested some of the starters at the end of the quarter. So what effect is that going to have on the game? We'll soon find out. Well, of course, it's about team basketball and the, the, the team that wins. But if Tierra Hodges can pick up four more points, she'll continue her season average. And she's been, that's just too hard. I thought the Hatters did well there. I, I, I really thought she would finish that, but I thought the Hatters did enough to keep the pressure on her and uh, make it difficult for her to take it. Oh, yes, Harrison for three. This time for she's all, off. Uh, for all the world from here, that looked like that was heading home. Yeah, it looked, like it looked in all the way, didn't yeah. it? So no score so far in the quarter, 63-61 still. And plenty of players who are capable of making a contribution to take the team home in this quarter, and both coaches have decided to start with all of them. Interesting. Although maybe maybe Drenner would be probably being rested at the moment. Interesting, though, that um, Katie Nolan hasn't played many minutes in this half. Lawrence Saki is fouled in the act of shooting. Well, one or two people around us didn't think that was a foul at all, but it's Marianne Dodds crossed with her fellow official. She mouthed great call. Lawrence Saki on the line is short on the first one. Makes a second. And Marianne Dodge was talking to Vanessa Ellis there, and the game was, was, was often run with hands by Lauren Saki and Nicola Follett fairly, and she's saying that that wasn't good hands, she smacked my hand to get rid of the ball. Not sure where Marianne Dodge is going with the ball, right? Give it back to Georgia Gill. Inbound to Harrison. Fairly picks it up. Faced inevitably by Saki. Manuel Carr. Georgia Gale from way, way, way downtown. Is no good. Saki took the rebound and now he's off and running. He was looking for. Oh, that's a nice play by. Oh, that's a great play by Craig. You know, just didn't finish it. Realised that Hatter's, well, that's got to be an offensive yeah. had to be offensive foul. There can be no doubt about that one at all. It, of course, looking at the uh, the official, that got that absolutely right. It was a clear push off with a free hand, the left hand. No doubt about that, that call at all. It's funny how people see the game, isn't it? Vanessa Ellis is saying it was a flop. Curry Guinness took real advantage of the fact that the, the, the whole of the Hatters defence were expecting to pass. Well, Marina Fernandez has turned the ball over again, unfortunately. Emmanuel Carr, and that's going to be a foul by Curry Guinness. She took one for the team, I think, there. Matt Newby just checking, he's got two timeouts left. You know, I have Leslie a feeling. Ramos comes on. Yeah, I have a feeling this would happen, I think. She likes the fact that she can send a fresh point guard in and not lose anything to go against uh, and just challenge Saki. I think that's a smart move. Yeah, Ramos coming on for Fairley. And at the other end, I just mentioned about Katie Nolan not having a lot of minutes. She's actually back on the court now with Washington back on court as well. Harrison steps back for three, is no good. Katie Nolan boxes yeah, out. really good boxing out. Well, it was, but then she felt she was almost pulled to the ground. But, uh, well, it was a two-point 
Bosque for Sheffield and it's back to a one point game. Abby Lowe driving in hard. No good, but she's fouled as she goes. I don't know whether she was determined to score there, but I'll tell you, she was certainly determined to get fouled. Really made an aggressive cross court move to get into the key. First foul on Emmanuel Carr. It's when you see the bingo board of lights up there for the fouls, is a remarkable achievement. Avilo knocks the first one down. This is the second. I was going to say, I didn't want to say any kids I jinxed it. I wish I'd said something now, but uh, missed the second. Avilolo gets the steal. Excellent steal. And lays it in. And now I can't see what I was going to say. Yeah. That, that is all the Eagles start as in double figures. Yeah. She used, she used those long arms well. Really quick and put pressure the defensive player, Ramos. Harrison back to... Emmanuel Carr misses the first three-point shot. Harrison wins the rebound. Well, Katie Nolan and I think this Shauna Harrison has been very impressive there. Well, this is, this is a really competitive game. I mean, weeks ago, we would be thinking this is one that the Hatters could come in and take. But right now, the Eagles have got that little lead probably deserve it they probably slightly edged it lot to go and it's a really really good competitive match 67 63 647 to go eagles to inbound Lauren Saki is double teamed but she still gets the ball faced by Ramos Saki gives it Abby Lowe there's Hodges to go back to Saki. Good movement by the Eagles players. But that's a poor pass by Lauren Saki. Eichmeyer's going to drive all the way. Up and under. And I think the foul's going to be on Marina Fernandez. No, nope, it's Katie Nolan. That's four I fouls for Katie yeah, Nolan. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I don't think Fernand Fernandez pulled out of that. I know somebody who definitely pulled out of that. That was Thierry Hodges. Smart play. She's more valuable being on the floor than she is sitting on the bench. And Ramos misses the first. This could well come down to fouls, couldn't it, in the end, the other way it's going. And misses both. Kira yeah. Hodges yeah. picks up the rebound. It might come down to miss free throws as well. Yeah, which could be a consequence of all the fouls. Lauren Saki thought about going to the basket, pop should have done. Pass again was not good. Georgia Gale takes that one really well and lays, knocks it down for two. Yeah, a really good pull up jump shot. So 67 65, and it's Georgia Gale up to 14 points first goal. The cap, I was going to say the captain, but she's not captain, this is Nicolette Fairley's captain. Tierra Hodges sort of out driving it on Eichmeyer, decided not to. Lauren Saki <laughs> goes flying bodies, right in front of the referee. Bodies flying everywhere. Abby Lowe's three-point shot is no good, but Katie Nolan gets the rebound and is fouled by Eichmeyer. Oh, end line ball, so clearly the foul was before Nolan went into the action of shooting. I think that's quite a small substitution there because I think Lauren Saki was a little bit head up there. And she's just gone all the way at the end of the bench. It's one good way to calm somebody down, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, because do you remember in the previous game we had here where she was had three fouls to give and she gave them all towards the end of the game? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent play by Chloe Gaynor. Received the ball from Fernandez and got rolled to the basket with virtually no time left. 
there's another foul called by our favourite referee, but it was a foul because as soon as the whistle went, Marina Fernandez put her hand up. A holding foul, and that's Marina Fernandez's first foul. First of the one, game. yeah. Matt Newby decides this is the time for his second time out, and we will take an advert break. So we're back. We have 5.16 to go. 69.65. So if Sheffield didn't score in the next 16 seconds, Matt Newby's now got 35 minutes of his 40 out of his <laughs> team. <laughs> well, even oh. if they do score, he's been... Yeah, all, all, yes, all these interesting things coaches have to do, you know, the player gets on four fouls. What do you do? Do you, do you say, OK, well, they're going to... They're going to lose their intensity on defence because they won't want to foul out. If you put them on the bench, then you argue, well, are they any use to me on the bench? All these things, it's like a timeout. Do I take it now? Is it really important? Do I want to keep it in case it's a really tight game at the end? This has the potential to be a tight game at the end. Now, I think you, I think the, the shout that you made before, well, we may be totally wrong because one side made with five minutes to go could still go on a run. Um, but the, the shot you made before about free throws could be very, very good. Oh, Ramos was left open there for three. That's poor communication by the Eagles. Yeah, you, you, that was an out-of-bounds situation. You didn't need to be helping out anyway. You just needed to be on your own man. Hodges will drive. It's double team. The ball switched around. Great, oh, great oh. ball movement. Marina can knock those down, it's just a pity that it didn't happen on that occasion, but that was really good ball movement. Well, two things about that, Dave. It was a pity it didn't go in, obviously, but it's a pity it didn't hit the rim or hit the glass because Tierra Hodges was completely by herself underneath the basket. So it had an easy offensive rebound yeah, and put back. But that last defence from the Eagles leaving Ramos like that was a complete breakdown. Yeah. And it's a one-point game, and it's a Sheffield with a chance to take it inside. Ike Meyer, you mentioned it before. Good footwork, good really footwork. good footwork. Yeah, good turn. Yeah. But the battle with Abby Low. Now Sheffield just go by one. I know people think the game's played mainly with your hands, but footwork's vital in this game. Yeah, and, and Washington doing a pretty good job on uh, Jerry Hodges. Is she going to keep doing it? Yeah, Ooh. she is. Not only that, she's smart enough to see the ball could be kept in by her. Sheffield approaching the four minute mark. Georgia Gale, what a great pass that was, by the way. And a great layup as well by Ike Meyer. Yeah, one of the best assists in this game. And Eagles' hands went up. She saw that. And a lovely bounce pass. And Sheffield just sneaked three point in front. Nice pass. Oh, Gale's having a real impact. This, you know, we quite first half. You pointed out scoring points, that lovely assist there, and she intercepted that pass that was heading to an Eagles hand that could add an, e add an easy layup. Good so few minutes for Miss Gale. Zoe Willis has done a substitution job, and Lauren Satty comes yeah. in for the last 3.39. Yeah, you let this dreaded secret out about me being born in Sheffield. <laughs> I was coaching in Sheffield once and I was always yelling out place, who's got Gale? <laughs> and that was of course was George's dad. Yeah. Garnet. Garnet Gale, yes. And of course her mum's a um a FIBA international yeah. um, table official as well. Now if that's <laughs> Tierra Hodges sometimes just defies description. Basket called good. Yeah, who, who, whoever's given this matchup on her has got a hard job. 
Well, she's an absolute scoring she machine, is. isn't she? She's rebounded as well. I don't know. I don't know. She she must have a boatload of double doubles in her career. Yeah, yeah. And Shavage is eight and a half rebounds as well. Oh, Shona Harrison's left wide open again, but she misses. Great rebound by Madison Washington, though. Jump ball called. <laughs> the whole of the Sheffield bench well, is up. The main in people, arms. the happiest pl person in the building will be Abby Law and every Eagles fan. <laughs> Way to go, Abby. Yeah, I'll just, just get the ball over. Just one second to spare. Yeah, but it was good rebounding by Chloe Gain and she was tough underneath the basket. Didn't panic though. Hodges out to low for three is no good. Good decision, good pass. Went to the right player. Just didn't drop. Georgia Gale all the way at the other end, but it doesn't go. Tierra Hodges takes the rebound. Scoops up another rebound. This is going to be interesting when you look at the double doubles. I think we may have two already for the Eagles. Well, Saki's got such good ball handling skills. Oh, what a great pass by Chloe Gain. As I keep saying, here, there's no such thing as a one two in basketball, but that's as close as you're going to get. Gain and Fernandez. Well, I think there might be that. I think we call it a give and go. Yeah. But uh, Saki's got such good ball handling skills, and you're never quite sure where she's going to lay the ball off. I think you'd have to say that Chloe Gain has really put in a good shift as well yeah. for the Eagles. Right, so we've got an interesting situation here. Hatless in the penalty. If the Eagles still got one to give, that could be vital. And now a chance to take the lead back to the team in black. So what I want, Dave, is one more rebound from... Tierra Hodges and one more assist from Lauren Saki and they'll both have a double-double. Marina Fernandez has leveled the score, making one of two. This game's going to have, uh, have a, a superstar step up and win it or it's got overtime written all over it. I don't know which. Eichmeyer finds Washington. Ooh. Now that, that's that was a close one, but I think close, probably was. It, but it's only the fourth team foul, so they're not going to try to strike at this stage. It just means now that the Eagles are just in the same position as the Hatters. They've no more to give without giving free throws away. Find the way some of these teams have been missing free throws this season. You never know, do you? That's the third final warning Matt Newby's had. <laughs> How many does he get? Well, I think what what Marianne Dodge was saying was that it was my call. Why are you berating another one? The ref one, one of the other referees. Oh. A lot of contact being allowed. Uh, I don't mind that. And you no, said it bodies good. everywhere. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> another one down. <laughs> bodies everywhere, but the refs obviously want if oh, they can to let the pass players pass by decide this. Fernandez. Terrible pass. And Lauren Saki picks up her fourth foul. And then True Sorry, Gentleman to goes to pick up Nicolette Fairley, who she's just knocked to the floor. I think it's her third foul, actually. Is it third or second? Oh, maybe it only be a second. This is going down to the wire, Jeff. 141, so Matt Newby's now got 38 minutes out of his team. Remember the Sheffield side is 10 and 4 in the league this season and the Eagles are 6 and 8. Knocks them both down. Nicolette. Do Sheffield lead by Do two. you like at the line there. This missing free throws didn't face her at all. Good running by Abilo off the ball. Nice inside exchanges, and guess who's got the post up? 
Katie Nolan, and it goes in for two, and the crowd's really, really, into really good curl play there by Marina Frandez that opened up Katie Nolan. 74-74, Georgia Gale for three is no good. Tierra Hodges has got her rebound, so she now has a double-double. Abby Lowe thinks about attacking the basket, does attack the basket, doesn't quite make it. Katie Nolan dives in. Now, if this foul, is this going to be on Madison Washington? No, I think it's going to be on Katie Nolan, I think. Well, I think one referee was going to call it one way and, and, and has been changed the mind. Katie Nolan is out. Yeah, I don't think there was any, any doubt. I think the, the referee saw that straight away. Obviously, Katie in a desperate attempt to try and get a hand on that ball, force a jump ball situation, just made the contact. I think it was on Washington, was it? Yeah. Well, it's Washington who's going to the line. Now, she is... Washington is a player who obviously has played forward centre, and she's used to taking rebounds and keeping the ball above her head to get the shot off. But if you watch it, she does the same with the free throw which is not necessarily the best technique in the world for a free throw. If you just watch here, the ball will go straight above her head. Wow, well, that's, that's a hard shot for a free throw. But she's used to doing that, yep. because taking rebounds against bigger players. And she's Buried them both. A great form on both of them. Good rotation on the ball. And has put her team up by two. It's 76-74. And we're inside the final minute. Lauren Saki. Well, I thought when Lauren Saki's shot got went up to 24 expired, but Tierra Hodges was able to get a rebound. Yeah. Charging foul call. Well, I'll tell you who the unhappiest person in this building will be. Vanessa Ellis. Yeah. Why? Because from where she's standing there, no way at all was that established defence. Well... I'm not saying it was the wrong call, but I'm saying from no, where. No, no, no. And, and now I think, you know, you could, it was a commentator, even if you are an Eagles fan, I've got to be honest and say that I would probably agree with Vanessa Ellis in that respect. But it was called, and it's uh, now inside. It's a, Eagles with a last chance to draw level. Or win it. Oh, and they, and they got it. The ball is stolen. Now all they need to do is hold the ball because they're going to have to foul them. Yeah. And, and if it's, it's Cherry Hodges, she's gone. No, that's a fourth one. Oh, that's right. She was on three before. Yeah. 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 So it'll be two shots. And of all the people you would probably want to go onto the line, it'll be Nicolette Fairley. Matt Newby's, I think, already called the timeout. Well, he has to, because, mind, if Nicolette Fairley misses this, he won't get it. He was going to call a timeout so he can advance the ball to the front court, because now he can either win it with a three-point shot, tie it, or... And she's missed, which makes it all very, very good. Shoot it! Get fouled! No. Well, it's almost an anti-climax, isn't it, really? Because in four seconds, Nicolette Fairley missed the second free throw. And then Chloe Gaynor took the rebound and took it a halfway, but the time expired before she could get a shot off. And uh, the, the buzzer went, and suddenly the building went a bit flat. But I tell you what, whatever you say about that game, right? Sheffield moved to 11 and 4. The Eagles moved to 6 and 9. But there was only two points between it. I think what you called before, Dave, it stands out to me. Congratulations to the Sheffield Hatters. They've shown their class by sticking with the Eagles all the way through. But the improvement in the Eagles is clear to see. Yeah, I mean, I was up there for overtime. And I think the Eagles players deserved it. 
and these fans would have loved it and what a you know tribute to the Eagles organization for yet again putting on this special day for women and uh, great turnout I mean we were wondering where all the crowd were weren't we a couple of hours ago but the, they've all suddenly appeared and they kept drawing after the game they've seen a really good game good good advert for women's basketball and it could have gone either way and obviously everybody here would be a little bit disappointed that the Eagles didn't pull that off but they've got a lot to play for I think they've cemented the place in the playoff already with that win last week right or wrong I'm not sure yeah, well, I'm, I'm not sure the Eagles are there, but the Sheffield obviously yeah, are. And, yeah. uh, you know, 74-76, it's finished. And uh, as I say, congratulations to the Sheffield Hatters. They went tough. And I think big big kudos for me, Georgia Gill, the way she led the side in the second half. And the point guard situation, I think, was a good... Was a, You mentioned, Dave, the fact that every time Nicola Fairley came out and Desiree Ramos went in or vice versa, they didn't miss a beat. That did, they did yeah. really well there. Yeah. Eichmeyer did really well for them. Shauna Harrison did well as well. Um, and they played well. But all of the Eagles starters got into double figures. And uh, they can be really proud of their performance. It's always difficult when you say, oh, be proud of the performance when you've lost such a close game. But that was a heck of a game. Yeah, and it's built up a great atmosphere for next Saturday now because uh, for everybody tuning in who's an Eagles fan, they've got to make the shortest road trip of the year, 16 miles or whatever it is between this court and uh, the Sport and Wellbeing Park. I used to say Maiden Castle, but now it's called the Sport and Wellbeing Park. And it's the, the local North East Derby. Yeah, that's uh, next Saturday yeah. afternoon, as you said, Dave, yeah. The Eagles won the first one here, and deservedly so. Uh, there have been some quite a big improvements at, at Durham as well. And of course, Durham had a good midweek by winning the uh, the books, the university championship. So that's, that's uh, good for him to look forward to next week and but thoroughly enjoy tonight so it's finished here as we say the serious group newcastle eagles 74 the b brown sheffield hatters 76 congratulations to the hatters commiserations to the eagles and uh, we all look forward to that derby next saturday afternoon we will be back here for the next eagles women's game which will be on Saturday the 13th of April, 7.30 p.m. tip off as usual against the Oakland Wolves. I hope you can join us again then and I hope you've enjoyed the coverage tonight. Good night.